Good morning, and welcome to Sacred Heart's live stream mass celebrating the ascension of our Lord, Jesus Christ. Please stand.
not grieve to know the times or the seasons that the Father has established by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, throughout Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were looking on, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him from their sight. While they were looking intently at the sky as he was going, suddenly two men dressed in white garments stood beside them. They said, Men of Galilee, why are you standing there looking at the sky? This Jesus who has been taken up from you into heaven will return in the same way as you have seen him going into heaven. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God mounts his throne to shouts of joy, a blare of trumpets for the Lord. sisters, may the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation, resulting in knowledge of him. May the eyes of your hearts be enlightened, that you may know what is the hope that belongs to his call. What are the riches of his glory in the inheritance among the holy ones? And what is the surpassing greatness of power for us who believe, in accord with the exercise of his great might, which he worked in Christ, raising him from the dead and seating him at his right hand in the heavens, far above every principality, authority, power, and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this age, but in the one to come. And he put all things beneath his feet and gave him as head over all things to the church, which is also his body, the fullness of the one who fills all things in every way. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Why does the church exist? Why do we have a church? This Feast of the Ascension invites us to reflect upon Jesus himself as he ascends to the glory of the Father. This also gives us a chance to reflect on us as a church. Why we exist? What is our mission? We may think in a global sense, in a universal sense of the Catholic Church, but I invite us to think about Sacred Heart. Why does this parish exist? As I ask that question, perhaps several answers come to mind for you. Was the place that I have come to baptize my children? It is the place that I come to worship God, to gather as a community in normal times. It is a place that I have been reconciled to the Lord and healed and forgiven. It is a place that I've experienced the anointing of the Spirit. It's a place where my children are educated at Sacred Heart School or through our CFF program. The list could go on and on about how this place, this community of Sacred Heart, and why it exists for us. All of those are parts of the reason why we are here, but I don't think they are our primary mission, our primary call in the Lord. This Feast of the Ascension gives us a glimpse of what we are called to be about. The Church, in all that we are about, all those things I mentioned and those that come to your own mind, are all about an encounter, an encounter with the person of Jesus, to be able to grow in relationship with Him, to know that outpouring of God's love for us, yes, in the waters of baptism, in the healing and mercy and forgiveness and reconciliation, in, those, in the times that we gather in worship and praise around this altar and where Jesus is broken and poured out for us, where we are formed and educated as children and as adults as well in the faith. It is a place for us to come to an encounter with the person of Jesus. Just like those first disciples, those first apostles that Jesus gathered around him. They spent at least three years with him, coming to know him, coming to know his mercy and forgiveness and love in their own lives. That encounter with him changed and transformed their life. They were healed and reconciled. They were taught and loved by our Savior. They were drawn in to a relationship of love. That's 
what we are called to in this relationship, this community of Sacred Heart. We are called into that encounter with the Lord. But what is it really all about? This Feast of the Ascension. It's always good to quote the Popes. I like to quote Pope Francis and Pope Benedict XVI about this Feast of the Ascension and then draw it to our ultimate mission. The ascension of Jesus into heaven, Pope Francis said, acquaints us with the deep, consoling reality on our journey. In Christ, true God and true man, our humanity was taken up to God. Christ opened for the path for us. If we entrust our life to him, if we let ourselves be guided by him, we are certain to be safe in his hands, the hands of our Savior. And Pope Benedict wrote this. He said, it would be a mistake to interpret the ascension as a temporary absence of Christ from the world. Rather, he says, we go to heaven to the extent that we go to Jesus Christ and enter into him. Heaven is a person. Jesus himself is what we call heaven. So this great feast of the Ascension and all that we are about as a parish community of Sacred Heart is about that going to Jesus, about coming to know that loving Savior, and then we are sent out on mission to proclaim that relationship in what we say and do. We, as his disciples today, are like those disciples in Galilee, those two white, white-robed men asking them, why do you look up at the sky? Go, go be about the mission. And Jesus himself in Matthew's Gospel says to us, Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We, you and I, are called to make disciples. We are to go out and proclaim the good news of Jesus in our words and our deeds and how we live out our life. Our Protestant brothers and, brothers and sisters would say to us, have you accepted Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior? We perhaps maybe would use different language, but we are called to proclaim him, to live him, to allow him to live in us. We are to be those makers of disciples out in the world. So I invite you this week to pray, to pray for a deeper encounter with the Lord, to deepen your relationship with the Lord. I know all of the normal places and ways that we tend to encounter the Lord here at Sacred Heart Parish seem to have been taken away, temporarily, perhaps. I think it has challenged us, in a real way, to make our faith our own, to really grow in that personal relationship with the Lord, to be people of prayer, when it's easy and when it's hard, we are called to that encounter with the Lord. So let us pray for that encounter to deepen in us, that relationship of love. And then ask for the grace to be a maker of a disciple this week. Think about those places and ways that you could be that disciple out on mission. How are you going to make a disciple this week? How are you going to proclaim Christ? in the actions and words and deeds you are about. At the end of Mass, every time we send you forth, we say, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Go in peace to glorify the Lord with your life. How are you going to glorify the Lord this week? How are you going to go out into the world and make disciples?
he got to that day, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Before Jesus is taken up to heaven, he is sure enough, I am with you always until the end of the age. With faith in his words, let us bring our need before the Lord. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For the church and for its leaders, that we may carry out with apostolic fervor the commission of Jesus to bring the gospel to the ends of the earth. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our country and those in elected office, they may be granted wisdom and discernment in making decisions for the common good. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders in every parish, that they may develop wise practices as public gatherings resume, and that many hearts may be open to assisting in our parish in new ways so that everyone who comes to church may be saved. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are ill, particularly those with COVID-19, that God's healing spirit will fill them, ease their pain, and restore them to health. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who gather today to praise the risen and ascended Lord, that we might share his peace and joy with one another. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, particularly those who have served our nation, that God will welcome them into the company of saints forever, especially Don Starcevich, brother of parishioner Darla Dide, and Eleanor Vicker, aunt to parishioner Chris Halterman. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Now join together with our divine renovation prayer. Father, of spiritual rebirth, work your divine renovation in our sacred heart, parish family. Make us a lovely community of love, forgiveness, and acceptance to all we need. 
Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of his hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. We offer sacrifice now and supplication, O Lord, to honor the wondrous ascension of your Son. Grant, we pray, that through this most holy exchange, we too may rise up to heavenly realms through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For after his resurrection, he plainly appeared to all his disciples and was taken up to heaven in their sight that he might make us sharers in his divinity. Therefore, overcome with pastoral joy, every lad, every people exalt in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly give you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate this Eucharist. From the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death, of his of his saving passion, therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the offering of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. 
Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant, Francis our Pope, and William our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family that you have summoned here before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, to whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us now offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. And we pray, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called in the supper 
for spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. I hope you have a happy and healthy and safe Memorial Day weekend. Time for us to remember those who have gone before us, those who particularly have served our country and give, given the ultimate sacrifice of their life for their freedoms that we celebrate and enjoy these days. We continue to wait for that day to be able to gather and regather as a church community. The bishop still has not given us permission to move into that first phase of phase one of daily mass, but we are hopeful and waiting with expectation that that will happen soon. As you saw, hopefully, in the email that we sent out, we're doing a, a, a drive organized by one of our uh, young members, Anthony Ellis, who's working towards his Eagle Scout uh, this weekend and this coming weekend and the following weekend, uh, kind of an operation back to mass safely drive. The email has lots of information and way to kind of sign up to, to bring the items that we are looking for to be able to help us do all of that uh, health and safety precautions that we will be, will be about as we, we gather again. So continue to pray for one another, continue to support us. We need your support in prayer. We also need your support financially. Continue to uh, be generous in giving of yourself. Continue to allow the Lord to work through you to help live that mission that we are about as a parish community as you go forth this week to make disciples of all nations. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who allows those who on earth to celebrate divine mysteries, grant, we pray, that Christian hope may draw us onward to where our nature is united with you. Through Christ 